if I see a couple people just popped in. I don't know if, can you turn on your cameras and your volume? Let's see, Ian, Kelly, and Logan, maybe? There we go. Welcome. This is, um, hi everyone. We're, uh, my name's Thomas Cardi. I'm a professor of history at Springfield College. And I want to thank you for joining us. It's, it's um, a really unique time, but as, as the students will tell you, and if you like history, you know, this is why we study history, because we never know what to expect. We can't predict the future, and we can, fortunately, if you know history, you can go back and realize there were incidents like this uh, before, there were pandemics before, and, and we'll get through it. Um, but there are some unique parts of our history program that I'll talk about. And maybe I'll let the other two students, Quinn and Emily, just say hello. And then maybe if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourselves. Um, and if you have any particular questions, feel free at any time to, um, to ask us. So Quinn, do you wanna just say hello and tell them who you are? Sure, so my name is Quinn. I'm a senior in the history and secondary education major. Um, trying to think of a fun fact. I studied abroad my sophomore year. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely do it. Absolute blast. I also participate in the BLAST program on campus, which is a, um, an elementary school after school program, which I just came from. Yeah, Emily. Yep, I'm everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm Emily. I'm also a history and secondary ed major. Um, I was not able to study abroad, but I totally agree with Quinny. If you're able to do that, that's awesome. I was able to take like a week trip to London with the school, which is also a good option, especially for education majors, because you may not have the time to just completely go abroad. But Quinn, Quinn knows, Quinn help, can help you navigate through that if you wanted. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about like MTEL or classes, I'd be happy to answer them. Oh, great. Okay, so um so that sounds really good and that's already making me think of some points that i want to make but first I, i'd like to hear about you so um kelly could you tell us where you're from and um, why you're interested in history in springfield college i'm just the nosy mom oh okay i'm somebody's mom i'm just being nosy about the program <laughs> okay great um and uh ian did you have any uh, thoughts or questions Okay, so we can talk about that. And Logan, how about you? Um, I'm just interested in the history program because it's always been like my favorite like subject in school. So I kind of enjoy it the most. So I was like interested in it. Okay, great. Great, so, okay. So I, um, I, I know that uh, Robert, you're there and, and, and we, I, I hope I'm running this properly, but but I basically just wanted to, to handle your questions and, and any thoughts that you had. But let me talk a little bit about the history program based on the questions that you gave me so far. So I am I'm a professor of history here at Springfield College for more than 20 years, and we have grown a lot. Um, we have developed a couple of, of options. One of them is the study abroad option that Quinn just mentioned. She went to Ireland and she was able to travel through Europe. We also have, like Emily mentioned, a, a short-term study abroad. And um, there's many different options here. One of them was a spring break, which is the one you did, Emily, right? You went for a week in spring break to, to London. And you could probably talk more about that too if, if students wanna hear more about that. Um, we also have some other options. Uh, Professor Ian Delahanty, who teaches history as well, and Professor Kate Dugan, who teaches religion. They've run an Ireland program where they have taken students to Ireland after the end of the spring semester. So they, this is one way that we've expanded as a program. There's more opportunities for history majors to, to do options like that. Also, there's an education study abroad in New Zealand, which another history major has done. Um, um, unfortunately, it was last semester, I think, but Molly Coates, I know that she got through most of it, and then I think she had to come back because of the pandemic. 
So there, it is a hard time to, to, to plan for study abroad because of the pandemic, but I think well, by the time that uh, sophomore, junior years, we're hopeful that you'd be able to do something like that. Another way we're expanding is we're expanding into law school. Some students increasingly, we have students that are interested in law school. So if you have questions about that, we could we, I could talk more about that, but there is a program where you can study three years at Springfield College and then go on to Western New England, three years of law school. So you could be finished in six years with your law degree and your undergraduate degree. So that's something I could talk more about. And then um, if you wanted to hear more about our programs, um, we, we, have, we have a lot of different interesting history classes, which I think the students could tell you about from their perspective. I know that Emily's taken a class in pirates and, and pirates in New England in particular. And we've had um, classes in um, environmental history, which I teach. We've had classes, uh, Professor Ian Delahanty is teaching a class in Ireland next semester. We've had classes on film and history, which I'm not sure if Quinn or Emily maybe have taken a class like that. Yeah. And then I've taught a class on presidential leadership as well and how um, presidents have, have uh, succeeded or not succeeded as, as leaders and the different qualities and characteristics which have, which have allowed them to show their leadership. So those are some characteristics of our program. And then one final one I'll mention is that we're trying to venture out a little bit into some, something called public history, which is the idea that history is not just in books, but it's also in films, it's also in museums, and there's jobs out there in public history. And just, just uh, this past week, we had a, a speaker from the John Kennedy Library, and she talked a little bit about public history and how the John Kennedy Museum and Library tries to promote public history. So those are a few thoughts that I had that Shannon plant some seeds there. Maybe you have some questions about that, but um, Emily, do you want to say anything about the pirates class, the film class, or other experiences you had as a history major? Yeah, sure. Um, just to kind of go off what Professor Cardi said, there's just so many different opportunities and like different interests if you're a history major. There's so many unique classes you can take. One of them I took was the pirate course, and it helps. It's interesting because you got to learn some local history. We went to a museum for that course, actually, and it connects you to on more a global scale, um, I was able to learn more about the age of globalization and connect it to piracy in like early America. So it helps you like build these foundations and like expand your knowledge more, your historical knowledge more. Um, speaking of field trips, um, I know we mentioned study abroad, but the history program also offers a lot of local field trips. There was supposed to be one to Boston last semester for my civil war class, but that got canceled because of the pandemic. But um, we did get to go to like a cemetery in Springfield and like see like a civil war battlefield and we got to do like a research project on um, and individuals buried in the cemetery. So the history program is very fast. Um, definitely going to have like courses we offer. Emily, oh, sorry. Up there. Can go downstairs. But I wanted to rewind um, from where you were. I think you 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 also had a field trip in um, to a pirate museum, right? Yes. So I got to go to Cape Cod here. I'm gonna go downstairs actually to see if the Wi-Fi is better, and then I'll talk about that. Sounds good. Okay. So maybe Quinn, you could pick up from there and talk about experiences as a, as a history major. Sure. So I wasn't in Emily's pirate class, unfortunately, because that sounds wicked cool. But I did one of the classes that we did was called Making History Public. And if you have like an interest in like public history and working in museums or anything like that, it was so interesting. So we actually looked into the school's archives and the school has like all their own historical stuff. They have, I think they have a signed jersey by Michael Jordan actually down there too. And we got to hold like James Naismith's application to the college, which if you don't know, he invented basketball. So wicked interesting. And we got to dive into the 
history of the college and we did research into like the civil rights movements and the protests by black students on campus in the 60s and 70s and we actually got to interview and do like oral history interviews with some people who participated in these protests which was so cool to get to talk to them and it really meant so much to the people I remember when I finished writing my paper and I emailed the guy I interviewed because I focused mainly on him and I gave it to him. He just like hugged me afterwards and he was like, thank you so much for letting me share my story. And he told me how excited he was to share with his family. So like being a history major and especially at Springfield College, you really connect with the community and do get the ability like to change lives. Like he was like, told me he couldn't wait to go home and share it with his grandchildren and was like making jokes about the title that we gave. But you really do get the ability and the time and you do get to like see how history changes the world and changes like the community around you, which I thought was amazing. I'm glad you brought that up, Quinn. Um, the, the Making History Public class, again, part of that public history class gave the students the opportunity, like Quinn said, to interview people and to get history from the mouths of the people who lived it. And so like she just explained, uh, maybe you've heard of the story of Kent State and how some students were shot on a on a campus in Kent State in, um, during the Nixon administration. Well, there were a lot of campuses where there were protests and Springfield College was one of these campuses where some black students took over a building. And given the, the, the recent um, several months and the, the, the killings of George Floyd and others and the, the terrible racial tensions, I think this gave us an opportunity as a college to kind of reconcile with some of this past that we had. And Quinn just gave a presentation, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, right, Quinn? And some of the black students, or the now, now adults, of course, came to that Zoom call. And it was very, very moving to see how, as Quinn just described, they, they really appreciated that students took an interest in what they did and um, their cause. And so, um, it was really kind of healing, I think, for them and for the college to, to, to review the, those events and to try to move forward. Um, so any questions so far as we're moving along here? All right, so we kind of summarized, you know, that there's the education option, there's a law school option, there's public history. Emily, did you want to add anything that what you were saying about the field trips? Sure. Is my Wi-Fi better? I think that's pretty good. <laughs> okay. We'll see what I can talk about before it glitches again. Um, I was just off kind of what Quinn was just saying. Um, being a history major at Springfield College, it gives you just such an interactive opportunity to uh, relate and learn about the history you study in your courses. Um, I was talking about how for my Civil War class, we got to go to um, a cemetery in Springfield and do research on an individual that was buried in that Civil War cemetery. And you just get connected to the history. And I also took um, the public history course with um, Quinn. So you get to just learn it in a new perspective and being able to talk to individuals that are still alive is even more great. And then the college just offers a lot of opportunities to like in our class with Professor Cardi this semester, we've got to hear a couple different guest speakers. And I just think great opportunity if you like love history, you'll be able to interact, interact with so much at the school, so yeah. All right, yeah, thank you both. So. I again want to hear a little bit more about the students and what your interest might be, but I'm going to share my screen and you can see there's Emily. If you want to go to our, our web page, you can see Emily talk a little bit more about, we can answer questions too about the education side of things. Both of these students, Emily and Quinn, have uh, getting ready for student teaching. They've been in the secondary ed program, so they're going to be out there. This is Professor Ian Delahanty talking about the um, project he, he did in the public history class before the one about Springfield College, he actually did one about the YMCA and World War I. So you could take a look at that video. And, um, you know, this is, you, you could just do a search of history program Springfield College, or you could go to, um, when you go to the Springfield College page here, you can look up different programs 
Um, if you look at undergraduate programs, you could click on that one. And then you just go through the list of programs, which will be coming up shortly. Maybe uh, it'll come up to a page that'll be programs like this. And this will then you go to browse to undergraduate, or you could type it in here. And you could, under H, you could find history. And you can see this history and history secondary education. And so you can um, go to either history or history secondary education, and you can find more about the program. So then there's Quinn and you can see her blog on, on her trips to Ireland, all the great places that she got to, to visit. And so um, there's more information about our courses and but maybe um, I'd like to hear a little bit about uh, Logan. Are you thinking about history, secondary education, or just history? I'm thinking about doing um, this history, secondary education. Okay. And Ian, are you the same or? Uh, just the regular history. Street history? Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, so any questions about how to do the history secondary education, Logan? It's a, it's a double major. It's um, so there's a lot of, you know, it's a, you have to really manage your, your class schedule. But any, any questions? I don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. Maybe Quinn and Emily could talk about how you manage the double major and the, the way they prepare you a lot of a lot of hours teaching right you mentioned blast Quinn and a lot of hours kind of preparing to be a teacher how has that helped so I actually was just working on my resume um, for after I graduate and I've just been counting out my hours I really have had hours since my like first semester freshman year with working with students and being in the classroom like it's very hands-on and the best way to learn is by doing it, you know, like you can only do so much learning through a book. So they really throw you into the classroom, not like let you loose on the class or anything, but you, they help guide you and you take baby steps into teaching and you really do get a lot of early practice and work through it. And I mean, I have just enjoyed it. I think it's fun. I was initially elementary education and then I switched to secondary because I just really like history and I thought this was probably a little more my speed. Um, with class like management and stuff, there are a lot of courses and it's kind of like strict, but they do lay it all out for you. And kind of you get like a guide and tells you when you should take it, when you have some free time to add some other stuff. And if you're interested in like studying abroad or something like that, definitely manageable. I remember when I said I wanted to do it, everyone was like, ah, yeah, I don't know if that's really gonna work for you, but you make it work. And I even took some of my history classes in Ireland, which was so cool and super weird to hear about like their perspective of America in comparison to ours. They're a lot more blunt than we would be about some topics, which is really interesting and really fun to hear. Emily? Yeah, um, the fifth story, the school really does help you prepare to be organized, even if you aren't the most organized person. Um, my freshman year, I pretty much planned out all the courses I was going to take for all four years, and I pretty much was able to follow that plan to a T. Like, they really help you lay it out, and, like, you can work, I, um, work 40 hours a week at, like, my, um, waitressing job, and still have time to do coursework and stuff. That, that's just me, but, like, but you'll be accommodated and you um, can work with schedule. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's, uh, I'm seeing Gordon, uh, Robert Gordon's comments there. So he's saying that he's in the background, but he's there and he's offering, if you have any um, admissions questions, uh, after we talk about the history content, he's happy to answer those. Um, I was thinking as Quinn and Emily were talking, I was thinking back and to just uh, to their first year, their first semester, we were in a world history class and they, they sat in the back left. And, and, you know, sometimes the students that sit in the back are not the good students, but these were really good students that always participated. So I think the cohort that 
that it, that is built among the students is really nice from my perspective that that I think Quinn and Emily have gotten to be good friends. I know there's other people that were other majors, but in education, even some that have graduated that you're good friends with. And, and then they've become mentors for the younger students, which is really nice. So I think we we're a small program, but we build that kind of connection. And, um, and then, you know, this past summer, when we had the pandemic, we got together on Zoom like this, Emily Quinn and I, and we kind of talked about history as they were preparing for one of the big challenges that maybe you could talk about is the MTEL test. Uh, Massachusetts has a pretty rigorous test for, for uh, teaching. And of course, the good part of that is that you really know your stuff. So we were able to, to, to get together this summer a little bit and review all that they had learned. But um, Quinn and Emily, do you wanna say anything about the MTEL test and not just for history, but the other tests, maybe how you were prepared for that? Quinn, do you want to start on that? Sure. So I, Dr. Cardi was so unbelievably helpful with preparing with those tests and especially meeting with us over the summer. Eternally grateful. The first couple, I don't know if where y'all are from, but I'm from Massachusetts and you have to take two, like a two tests and then the history test to be like a history teacher. And so for the first two tests, it was kind of similar to the MCAS for me. I don't know if you're from Massachusetts and are familiar with those tests, but that's how I felt like the first ones were. But then the history content one could literally have been anything about history, American world, US government, political theory, economic, literally anything. So very stressful to look at. And they do dive into like, it's not general questions. Some are very more content specific, like pick out the individual person, but Dr. Cardi helping us with preparation and the class that you take really were so helpful. Like I'll, I was reading through some of the lists and I was like, oh, yep, got it. Remember that. Remember like a little weird fun fact because those just stick in my head. And I really just like made flashcards, just studied those. It was really helpful just to take some time out of the day. And like I said, Dr. Cardi, unbelievably helpful with that. Was very stressed and great sigh of relief to get to have those like weekly meetings with him. Great, yeah, thanks Quinn. Yeah, and I think again, just uh, it's really refreshing for me to see how well they've done and, and what great leaders and mentors they've been for the incoming students. And next year, I know we've got juniors and sophomores that are really good students too, that'll be mentors for, for, for um, new students that come in. So I see Emily wrote that, um, that um, I'm still working. Yeah, that's right. I'm still working to make sure that every student succeeds, as she said, like, um, because Emily and I are working on trying to build up some resources on what's called Brightspace, which is our learning management content page. And, and so we're, we're continuing to, um, to kind of build on what, what we're starting. So that's, so that's, that's, I guess, from our point of view, um, on the education. Ian, did you have any questions? You can either type them in the chat or, or about the what you might want to do with history. Any ideas? Can you hear me? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I can hear you. I was having issues with my microphone and my headset. Yeah, I couldn't hear you earlier, but this is better. Yeah, I was just I was curious because about like I knew there was a whole public history program and how like there's the museum on campus that they work a lot heavily with um and i thought about like how like i have been to an open house back before covid and i remember that the it might have been you actually who gave the history program presentation or it might have been the other professor i'm not sure it was e, it was ian delahanty yeah we're, we're both irish guys <laughs> he's younger than i am so yeah. Okay. So for sure. Yeah. The, the, the public history in the museum is, a, is I think, um, yeah. And again, Quinn and Emily can say something here about this if you like too. But from my point of view, it's, yeah, we have something special there that the archivist is willing to, willing to help out, um, willing to take people as interns if possible. If you really love the public history angle and you want to get into working as an archivist, um, again, like last week, we were just talking with the, the librarian from the, the head research librarian from the JFK library, and she said archive studies is there's really opportunities there. 
uh, public history is very competitive, she said. But she said, if you want to do it, there's you get, you know, any of these things with history, you, you may be looking at a, at a higher degree, you know, whether it's a law degree or a master's in public history or a master's in education. Uh, but there's still a lot of good opportunities. Definitely, like I said, in that public history class that I took, I believe that's like a requirement if you're pursuing like the public history, I think it's minor, it yeah. might be, but super cool. We actually, got, we got to go into the room where all the documents and everything was held, really cold room, but it was really interesting and really like, just like nice, because normally you read about history through a book, but I love primary sources. I love getting like that really personal interaction with the material. So getting to go into the archives and see all the documents, and even hold them in your hand is just, it's really different. And it's really cool that we get that ability at Springfield College and that they do have the history of basketball and all that stuff. So if you're interested in like sports history, which is wicked fascinating, you get to have that experience. Yeah, you just reminded me as Quinn was talking, um, I just called up, if you click on our webpage about internships and history, we, we had a student that did an internship at Mystic Seaport. If you're familiar with that in Connecticut, this is a really famous um, uh, historical, kind of like a Plymouth plantation, right? Where they do historical reenactments and they try to transport you back to the 19th century. And then that turned into a job. And so she's got a job there at Mystic Seaport. Um, so our point of view with the public history is that it is competitive, but we think if you could do the minor and you get all this experience with our small little museum and our archives, then you go on for a master's degree, you've got kind of a leg up. You're, you're a little bit ahead of other people who might want to do public history, but they really didn't get any experience as an undergraduate. So that's our point of view. Um, and then I see Emily put something in the chat there about um, how, oh, you, you use that as a lesson. So she was able to use her, her, res her primary sources that she researched as a for a lesson plan. I'll throw my two cents of a mom set of questions in there. Okay, go for it. The history major at Springfield is relatively small. So what size classes are you guys lucky enough to have? Well, that's a, that's a good question, right? That, that um, right around the corner from us is a, a school like, um, well, Western New England and, um, and, or I went to the University of Connecticut for my graduate degree. And it's true that, that the upside is that University of Connecticut has 30 history professors, at least, you know, so we, we, have, we have three full-time history faculty. But oftentimes in the introductory courses, you're being taught by graduate students, you know, and, and so again, the, those relationships aren't, aren't built as much. So to answer your question directly, um, our class with Emily and Quinn right now, the upper level class is 14 students, it's a seminar. And um, I've had, that's about the size roughly, but I've had sometimes um, 10 students in the upper level classes. In the introductory classes, the 100 level classes, there'd be 25 to 30 at, at the max um, for the introductory classes. And those are taught by grad students or by the three of you? The three of us, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm saying at the university, maybe I confused by going on the University of Connecticut, but yeah, at the University of Connecticut, you, you, you might have graduate students teaching your introductory classes. Um, um, but, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's, a, if it's a good program. It's just that we're, we're different and we're smaller and we're more um, you know, closer to our students, I think, and, and for that reason. Now, what about if a student already has an organization, a historic organization like the Springfield Armory that they're already affiliated with? Um, as far as volunteering there, would that be something they could parlay into an internship later on? Absolutely, that and that, that's really fabulous question because uh, I don't know if Quinn or Emily, did you ever go to the Armory with any of our field trips? No, so interestingly, I've taken students to the Armory at least three different years, but somehow I missed it with Quinn and Emily. And just and 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 we have a really good relationship with the armory. There's a um, there's a ranger Susan Ashman, 
and she she is really great. She came to my environmental history class, and she talked about uh, the the National Park Service. And um, so I wrote to her this semester. I said, "Gee, this is terrible. We can't go to the armory, but in some ways, it might be easier. You know, rather than me doing the logistics of getting thirty students or you know twenty eight students together and taking them to the armory, we could do it on a Zoom call." So just last week, um, her her um, colleague Scott actually did it, but he took us through the camera downstairs of the armory. Um, things are kind of closed up upstairs, but we went to the basement. He showed us some of the equipment, and um, it was a you know the best we could do in these times. But I think it was uh, we have a relationship with the armory, and I'd love to build on that relationship. Is the, what I want to say because I think I think that's another career path as a National Park Service Rangers that students could pursue. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities. We have so many, we have so many uh, National Park Services sites. And we, since we have the Springfield Armory right around the corner, we have Watershops Pond that used to be the armory back in the, back in the 1800s. Our campus was part of the armory. Um, so it is a great, yeah. And, and if, um, if you have a relationship there, uh, we'd love to build on that. Thank you. Thank you. That's, I'm glad you brought that up because the armory is an area that I think is our next area that we'd like to build on. I haven't worked with the archivist there, but I, I've met him and I've talked with him and he's a really great person. And I think we've done a lot with our campus archives and now I'd like to, to, to consider working with the armory. Um, so you went to the armory, Emily, as a, as a student teacher field trip with eighth graders? <laughs> Yeah, I think the armory has so many possibilities because the it's it's not you know guns and and shooting is something that's not something that you you really are drawn to these days as much. But the but the manufacturing and the and the mechanics that went into it, the the high tech of the 1800s, I think that's a theme that I try to emphasize when I talk about the armory. So anything else? Logan, where are you from? Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, somewhere uh, else? I'm from New York. New York? What part the, of New York? The Eastern Long Island area. Yeah. Did you know any students at Springfield College? Uh, no, I don't, but my sister goes to the college at Western New England right down the road, so. Yeah, yeah. So we've, we've increasingly had students from um, New York. I know we, um, I know that we've, we've had students from Long Island too. Nick Fazio in our classes, I know from, from Long Island. And Ian, are you from more close by or far, farther away? Yeah, I'm a local in the town away. Oh, good, good, all right. So yeah, I guess if there are any other questions, be happy to answer any other questions. But for sure, we would we would work with if you're in New York, Logan. You know the the tests um, are not the same as Massachusetts. You could take the Massachusetts test, and once you pass those, you're pretty much qualified everywhere. Um, I think that's one good thing about the education program at Springfield is that you get the license, as Quinn and Emily said, you get all those hours so that you 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 get into the classroom and you get licensed as you go out with the degree and with the license that you can take to other states. Um, we have had students that, that have done history, but maybe not the education major. And then they go on for a master's degree, you know, and they, they get their license when they go on for their master's degree. So, so there's that option as well. Um, but if you do the double major, then, then you do finish with the license also. Great. So, any other thoughts, Emily, Quinn? I think we've- It's nice to meet you all. And if you have any questions, I probably sent emails out to you. If you um, signed up for like our prospective student email list, so feel free to just like email back if you do think of any questions. Yeah, you can um, just search your email box because Emily usually writes to prospective students. If if you if if um if you want to or just just look us up. Um, I'm tcardi at springfield.edu, 
And I think it's the same with Emily and Quinn, right? Is it Q and then your last name? And Emily, E, Conroy, Q, Keneally. And so then, um, yeah, I was just thinking that um, if there's anything we can, we can add, please let us know. I know that we've recorded videos in the past. So if you want more information, I'm sure Robert um, probably has access to that because we recorded a video for, um, for the uh, majors fair. Um, and like uh, you've got the videos on the online as well. So any other questions? Not, not thinking about law school, Ian or Logan? No. Um, I did feel like the, the whole like expansion to the program, like what's the kind of timeline for that looking like? For the law school or the, yeah. Like, uh, I heard there was just a general department expansion in regards to the courses offered or something along those lines. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a lot of, there have been a lot of new courses offered recently. That's true. So I'm trying to think of um, next semester, Ian Delahanty's teaching immigration history. Um, there was a time when I, I taught a course on history and Harry Potter. So, so we, you know, we, we do have the luxury to be creative sometimes with these types of, of, of classes. I'm trying to think, yeah, Ian Delahanty's teaching the Ireland class. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Professor Gonzalez de Leon, he's taught a class on film and history um, in the pirates class. Uh, you know, um, one thing that he did years ago is he did a Halloween lecture on his visit to uh, Dracula's castle. He's actually traveled really worldwide. He's traveled to the Sahara Desert and he's, he's like eaten in the tents with the Bedouin uh, people in the Sahara Desert. And, and he's probably told you these stories in class and I, I hear him sometimes from students, sometimes from him. Uh, he he went to, uh, you know, he says that the, the the tourists, the tour guides will take you to the real Drac or to one Dracula's castle. But he's read the history books and he knows the true Dracula's castle. So he, I think he climbed over the wall. Did, did, do you know the story better than I do? <laughs> I think he's 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 gone. Do you know that, Emily? Um, no, but pretty much he did say that story. And when we were on the Cape Cod trip, we actually kind of went over a fence so we could see the shipwreck of um, the would be a pirate ship, which is like the only pirate ship in Massachusetts. And he was just so excited to just like see this. We just like looked out at the ocean. Yeah, he's definitely willing to go the extra mile to, to, uh, to find the, the historical fact. So again, thank you very much for um, taking the time to, uh, to, to hear more about our program. And as, as we said, if we can help, we'll be happy to, to get you some more information. And um, I see Robert wrote a note to Logan there. If you're a senior, please note the history secondary ed program is test optional this year. So Robert, does that mean uh, no need to take SATs or ACTs or no mean to submit those? That is correct. <clears throat> yeah. No. And that's, yeah. All of our programs are normally test optional, but the few programs that we do require test scores for at Springfield College do include all of our education programs. But for seniors this year, because there's been such a severe lack of testing opportunities for students, we have waived that requirement completely. So you will just partake in a, um, you know, a one credit course in your first semester at Springfield to make sure that you're on track to pass the MTELs or the first MTELs in the sequence. And that is what we are using in place of the um, testing. So if you did take the SAT and you want to submit it, you're more than welcome to, but know that if you didn't have them or you don't want to submit it, you don't have to by any means. Great. So again, we're happy to answer any other questions and really appreciate you coming, popping in, so to speak. I, I was I was actually, we, we had somebody from our, uh, I had my, for my uh, 
Quinn and Emily were in this class. I, I have the head of my high school is a real fan of John Kennedy. So we've been talking about John Kennedy this semester and we've been talking about um, Kennedy and the space program and uh, how he wanted to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. And I remembered that my, uh, high, the, my high school headmaster had said that he loved John Kennedy and he loved Star Trek, James T. Kirk from Star Trek. So, so I, I invited him to my class via Zoom and he talked about his experience in the Kennedy administration. And I remember in an email, he said, yeah, um, um, you can beam me up into Zoom. <laughs> you know, imagine the 60s, they would have never imagined we're doing something like this, but because they did imagine that we would be transporting each other from other places. So that's, uh, that's all from our end then. Thank you again for, for the time and um, please be in touch if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Quinn. Thank you, Emily, for sharing your thank you. time with us.